Welcome back to Homeschool Journey 101. I'm Helen Hagen and my friend Renee Capuano will be joining us later. I'm so excited about this video and so is Renee that I'm probably going to remember to not say it, but if you, if you, if you like it and you would be willing to subscribe or put your, give us a thumbs up, we'd love it. But here's the thing. It's two fabulous topics, right? Reading and Christmas. I mean, it's just, it's just a match made in heaven, right? It's perfect. It's perfect for all the things that you want to happen to have your child become that strong, independent reader that can understand and read things in depth. Because here's the thing about Christmas books. So many of them are visually beautiful, drawing in kids who both are, you know, experienced readers, but maybe are, you know, kind of getting a little worn out on their textbooks and run, and readers who are a little more struggling. The beautiful visuals bring them in, help them understand what the story means. Uh, there's so many Christmas books, both secular and of course, you know, uh, Christian that bring home stories that are just what we want our children to be thinking about, the, what it is to be a moral person, a person who gives, what, what is giving, what it means to be a good person, like how do we make other people's lives better. There's so many things that happen in Christmas books that are key to what I wanted my children to become, and I'm sure you feel the same, that it's just almost like you get your own Christmas gift in this idea of having Christmas books help be a bridge into what what you want your children to be in the future. So how do you get the Christmas books? Well, you know, there's a number of ways. Of course, the libraries have a lot of them. Many of us who um, start to build a Christmas library find ourselves doing it a little bit at a time. So starting when your children are young, it could be that of every Christmas for a few years, your children are going to get you know, one book or a few books, and pretty soon you have, you have a lot of books built up. You can ask relatives for them. Um, you know, I know when I was first starting, I would actually very much enjoy buying a couple a month, you know, throughout the year when I could, you know, when it's a little easier to come up with the money than in December. Now, you can see if you've been, you know, you watch this video that one way I've done this is to display them all together on a, a big table where the table is set, it's all ready, and they can go it's sort of a smorgasbord of books. They can pick the books that they want to read at a given time and uh, enjoy them. And you can see you can sit down right there and read them. Uh, we've often done it, you know, on on a Sunday after um lunch where we say okay we're just gonna spend an hour we're going to turn on some fantastic music um it could be you know maybe you love carols maybe you love advent music maybe you love 1950s christmas songs but whatever you know you want to have in the background and have this experience of reading together as a family is just beautiful lighting some candles at the same time is just such a perfect moment right for bonding and for joy and for having like a little bit of peace right like a little time together and time I'm thinking about these big things. Now, you know, when I do this, I often would say to my children, like, okay, so, you know, I want you to pick this many of uh, you know, secular books and this many religious books. You might, you might choose to do that too, or you might want to just have it pick whatever you want to, um, to choose for that particular time. Um, there's other ways to do this too. Of course, all together is fabulous, right? But we worked in this idea of we're gonna you know, incorporate our Christmas library and Christmas reading into our whole December of homeschooling, right? So this would be on their list every week that you know, every day or three times a week, they were going to have you know, a half hour or an hour of reading time of using the library. And so one thing I did when kids were younger is actually divide books more into tables according to their age groups. Of course, I have nine children. You know, this may not be a problem for you. You know, maybe you have one child. But if you, for me, that was kind of helped them sort of focus in on, you know, certain books that might be, um, you know, speaking to them more. And, you know, those different tables, I would just kind of decorate the table a little, you know, maybe have a little tree there or, or whatever it is that kind of, you know, just makes it extra special, their little Christmas book table or, or big table, whatever it was. Another thing we did is let them have nighttime centers. And so this was very fun uh, where um, they, if they were old enough, they got to have a candle and they got to read by candlelight. They loved this, love, love, love this. If they weren't old enough, or an actual candle. We had little battery operated ones, you know, those you look like a little candle that has the uh, glass bulb at the top. And that was very enjoyable too. Uh, during this time when they were younger, we also had some um, costumes that they could wear. So we had some angel costumes, we had a, a reindeer, you know, very, 
things like that, that they could even, you know, wear the costume and, you know, have the candle, maybe still have some music in the background. It's just such a festive, fun, uplifting experience. I just love that. Another thing is we would put up some Christmas lights in their bedroom and, uh, so for a certain number of time before bed, they could have the Christmas lights in their room on and read by this. So these are just some of the ways that you can package this idea, this, this splendid sparkling idea of Christmas and reading together. And again, so many Christmas books lend themselves to what we want our children to become, right? So that's, you know, that's a win right there. But the idea that at this time, that at this season, you are taking some time to look into the meaning of Christmas and the idea of what it is that makes a person what we want the person to be. Like, how, what is it to be a good person? What is it to be a person who gives? What is it to be thankful? These are all kinds of things that um, Christmas books just seem to be perfect at bringing together. So I, Renee's going to talk to you a little bit, and then we're going to go into some of our favorite, favorite Christmas books. You know, maybe some of them will speak to you too. There's some that, you know, you might not have thought about or you might have forgotten about. We hope to sort of bring those back to people and help them realize just all the books that are out there, right? Even really young children can enjoy a Christmas center. And so you can see here this adorable little one-year-old who you might have seen in some of my other videos, enjoying his own Christmas center of books. And whether they're in, you know, on a table laid out or they're in this sort of um, upright structure next to it, this kind of shelf, like a vertical shelf, that they can pick out a book and take it out. This makes these books accessible for centers for even very young children. Uh, so much fun in this to, to have and start this love of learning, combining it with this joy and excitement of Christmas that's in the air. And again, music can help to, to spread this feeling around. Here are some ideas for your youngest toddlers. So these books with the little puppet in the middle are just super attractive. Lots of giggles. You know, it's just a silly thing. You can imagine all the games you can have playing with it. And, you know, as the pages turn, the puppet stays the same. It's very fun. The, you know, the, the fun is in the puppet, not in the plot of the book. Um, Here's a, a great new little book called The Little Blue Truck. Of course, some toddlers are just crazy about trucks anyway. Uh, this is a nice little book about giving. It's got the trucks. It's got the animals in the sleigh. Uh, it does have some counting. Nice book about giving. The big thing about this book is the twinkling lights at the back. That's the thing that there's, you know, the, the gimmick that really keeps the toddler going from one page to the other. So, um, you know, a nice little book for the youngest of toddlers. There's so many beautiful books telling the Christmas nativity story, but for the youngest toddlers to kind of keep them engaged and, um, you know, keep them <laughs> wanting to hear the story. I like this book because of all the pop-ups. So the pop-ups are, you know, just like an extra little thing to draw them in and make them think, oh, you know, I want to hear more about this story. And, you know, and also just the action of it is, is kind of a nice way to help the story unfold. So anyway, some ideas for, the, for your youngest toddlers who you're worried about, um, that you want a board book for because you're not so sure that they won't rip the books up. Now, when you're getting to a child that's, you know, a little bit of an older toddler or a child that doesn't rip books, then I would choose a book called Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And it seems like it's just about the song, but actually it's about the nativity and uh, it's a lovely story of uh, siblings together and on every page you have the sparkly star and they eventually are going to go and find Jesus. A very simple story, but very attractive to young, young children, I think. Um, a fun book for, I think that it's not too young. We have those uh, preschool and early kids to help them kind of understand the songs of Christmas are really big with books that have songs. And so this Deck the Halls is one that my kids have really enjoyed. And it's very, very simple. It can also be an easy reader book because there's very little words. There are very few words on it. The pictures are very fun. And it's just Deck the Halls. And you know, who doesn't want to say follow la la la? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a win-win-win. It's just so fun. We just love to have it. Um, 
I also feel like this classic, um, The Little Drummer Boy, you know, I'm sure that yeah, most of you have heard of it. And, but um, the pictures are very attractive. And again, The Little Drummer Boy does not have, um, the words are pretty simple. You know, it's a pretty easy idea to, for even you know, a young child to get the idea of what's happening. He's going to play his drum from it. And of course, it ties into the Christmas song. So that can be a, you know, a lovely intro too. Um, another Christmas book that I very much enjoy is this one, A Child is Born. Um, again, for those preschoolers, it's very simple. But uh, it gives you, it, it gives the idea that the child will enjoy. Uh, the other thing I very much like for the preschoolers is if you pick something like this baby's Christmas treasury that just has very short poems. Um, and, you know, they, in this particular book, I don't know how well you can see this, but they are, you know, they are, these, are, these are secular little poems and stories, but, you know, children really can enjoy a book like that where you're sitting down and you're reading them pieces of different poems, pieces of different stories that are, um, you know, part of Christmas for that preschool age. This is just a brief category I'm going to call unusual Christmas books. And so this one is, is fairly recently been uh, printed. And, uh, you know, they it appears to be, you know, a combination of actual photos. And the thing is, is even if they don't follow the, the story, the whole uh you know, can't take everything that's written in the story. Even very young um, children like this. Um, toddlers like these stories that, you know, you know, because of course it appears to be that this um, actual photograph of these different things happening. And um, the little girl, of course, eventually is working to help Santa. But it's the pictures with the wildlife that um, seem to be very you know, very intriguing to toddlers and also young children. This is All Be Home for Christmas um, by Holly Hobby. It's an older book, but it's, you know, it's still available. And it's an unusual story about someone, uh, it's one of the pigs having to work very hard to make it home to um, see his best friend for Christmas or his brother for Christmas. And, uh, you know, it's hard to explain, but if the actual, in this case, the, the text is um, is very subtle, is a very uh, charming, heartwarming um, story of, of two pigs. And one of them, you know, the goal is to make it home to, you know, the people that love you. Angelina's Christmas is, um, you know, a book that is, is a very different kind of story, I think, in that it's about, first of all, there's a little bit of realizing that you love your siblings and, you know, a little sibling rivalry, but also a story of reaching out to an older uh, friend in a community who can use some Christmas cheer themselves. And um, you're reaching... Uh, that, that idea that we want hopefully uh you know our children to get the idea of um finding joy and helping other people so so another nice story three stories that don't fit very well into um the categories that we sort of had chosen but i think you'd like them there's so many sort of easy reader books for christmas that are pretty average and I'm sure you can find them too but I wanted to just put out two of our favorites a book like this that is about Christmas trees is very fun so this particular book talks about the history of Christmas trees it talks about how Christmas trees are grown it talks a little bit about Christmas trees around the world it um, talks about famous Christmas trees like in New York City um, this is this is a well-worn book because it's really a big favorite of my all my kids. Um, this is a book that is not very well known, but you can find them. And basically, this is about a set of Swedish twins, um, very interestingly named, as you can see from the title. Um, but it's a great adventure story. So it's at Christmas, they go out on an adventure and they get lost and they are uh, found and saved by the Laplanders. And it's such a great story about uh, Christmas and, you know, enjoying people, but also about making new friends and finding new sort of new 
know, a new way to look at things, if you will. But the story is very interesting. Uh, you know, all my kids really love this idea of going out, getting lost in the snow, getting found. You come back with on a reindeer cart, like what could be better? All right, so just a short category here, but there's a number of Christmas history books that are worth a second look. I know you might be thinking like, oh, give me a break. But this is such a fun book, This Christmas from Heaven. This is about dropping food to um, people in World War II. You know, dropping, food, dropping food, and here's my favorite advent read here, but um, the, the planes coming and dropping food to people who were um, starving. And it's very heartwarming. You can see that it has uh, pictures of actual soldiers that did this, the whole story of, you know, the drop. It's, it's, very, it's very interesting. It's very intriguing, but it also still has that very strong Christmas message of giving. Um, this is a book about um, basically the Roosevelt's and the White House, and um, it, 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 it's about Teddy Roosevelt a little bit and the conservation efforts that he was behind, but it's also about just being a child in the White House. There, there's others, there's, you know, there's, there's so many that you could do, but I just wanted to, to mention those. The next books I'm going to do are books for kids. I mean, younger kids might enjoy having them read to them, but these are really probably specifically for, you know, junior high and up, you know, sixth grade and, and up. I mean, they're you may have a child who who will feel differently about them but uh, this is maybe one of my favorites and it's called the mansion and it's sort of slightly like the idea of Ebenezer Scrooge where it's someone who realizes the joy of giving and they have this experience where they um, they go to, uh, they meet some people, they go to something that's vaguely, you know, it's not clear whether it's heaven or not, and it's not entirely clear if it's a dream or it happens to him, but he has a awakening to the idea of realizing what's important, and in the end, he, he realizes that what he really wants is to be close to his son and, and, and to uh, give money, become a good person. It's, it's, it's very, um, it's, it's more subtle than a lot of books for people that age. Um, this is called Christmas Day in the Morning, and this is a book that, you know, it makes me want to almost cry just to talk about it. It's a, a story about a poor um, farm family, and it's about a boy who goes through a transformation when he hears his father talking about how he hates to have to wake him up early every morning to go out and do the chores. And he realizes that his father loves him. And knowing his father loves him changes everything. It changes things from seeming like drudgery chores to realizing that like his father is doing all this work because his father loves him. And so he thinks about what he can give his father beyond the you know, usual gift. And what he does is he comes up with this amazing surprise where I kind of don't want to ruin the book for you, but he comes up with the idea that what would be the real gift for his father would be not to have to work. So he is going to get up early and do all his father's chores. And he is sort of, you know, it's almost like he be, he's 15, almost becomes a man in the realize, realization of how he can help his father. And his father has the joy of, for the first time, being able to see his children come down and see the tree. It's a beautiful, beautiful book about, you know, an adolescent realizing what it is to be a person who is, you know, doing things selflessly and understanding your parents. It's just very beautiful. And hopefully I don't cry right now. But I love that book. I love that book. The other one that um, I want to bring up, this is a sad Christmas story, a Christmas memory, but it's a beautiful sort of sadness where he's looking back on the person who was the most like a parent to him. It's a, you know, a, a relative that has um, raised him in, in the sense that that's the person who, you know, provided him with love and his family. And it's about her becoming older. It's, it's hard to explain, but her gift of to him is this life of wanting to make other people happy and doing things for other people. It's a little bit more complicated than that. There's definitely some um, 
older, a little bit older themes, a little bit older ideas in that book, but that is a very beautiful book as well. Um, if I was going to pick two classics at Christmas that are fun for your child to read, uh, the, these are, even the Little Women can sometimes be a, a younger child's um, story. This particular version is for, you know, kids that are a little bit older. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of text, but these beautiful pictures, and of course, you may remember if you've read the series that their father goes away to the Civil War, and so they have a Christmas where they have um, less than normal, normally they do, and they are going to decide to give their Christmas breakfast to someone who has much less than they do. And so again, it's, um, I obviously really love these books where people learn about giving, they learn about kindness. Um, a Wind in the Willows Christmas, obviously a completely secular book. Um, you, you, you can see Wind in the Willows as a cartoon, but um, this particular book is obviously, you know, a lot more text. And to, I think, to understand all of the themes in Wind in the Willows, most kids are going to need to be, you know, in junior high or fifth grade for sure. Um, Reading a little bit of that delightful story at Christmas every year, and just this is such a such a brightly written. It just I always find it you know very um, sort of um, uplifting. So you know this book by O. Henry, right? It's the classic story where she's going to cut her hair and he gives away his watch band. But this is such a beautifully written a story. It, I just feel like. It's great to revisit it. All uh, the pictures in this are lovely. Uh, you know, obviously this is a story that has, uh, you know, has a lot of text because it's, it's a longer story. Whether you want this particular version or another version, I think that this is just such a classic story for your um, older child to enjoy. So anyway, you might notice that, or maybe you didn't, that I really, for these older kids, the books all are secular or, or, or largely secular. Christmas Day in the morning, not so much, but I, I, I feel like I'm saving the nativity scene, the nativity books for sort of the middle age where you know, they could go either way, right? They could go either way, up or down. So those are still coming. Okay, so my next topic is books about Christmas carols or books that are actually just a Christmas carol. Obviously, I am very keen on Christmas carols. But this is the first one, Silent Night, Holy Night, which I could have put in with the history books. I really wasn't sure which one I should do it. And this starts with the idea of the history of this beautiful hymn. And of course, you know, you may know that it was written after a time of, you know, very, very egregious time of war in the country. And so it talks about the person who wrote the hymn, how the hymn came out, you know, you know and it makes it even more meaningful, I think, if you know uh, the story of before it was written. Anyway, beautiful book. It also has, has a lot of uh, history in it, but it's also just about this one. Um, we Three Kings, this is just going through the words in the song, but it's just beautifully illustrated. Oh my goodness, it's just, just uh, so scrumptiously rich. You're going to love it. Um, Good King Winslet is another favorite. Of course, this is, this is a, a song that you may not have heard as much, but of course, a beautiful song about um, the page and letting the page walk in his uh, shoes. <clears throat> but again, it's a beautiful book. It's a it's it's a lovely it's a lovely story, and the song, is, you know, I, I love that Christmas crop. Twelve Days of Christmas is also such a fun book, and again, you know, there's so many books of the Twelve Days of Christmas. In fact, the first one I bought my kids had just these babies dressed up that they loved when they were little. But this is a book that uh, maybe for for an older child that you'll just um, you know kids. And adults may love how this is is done. You know, like each page is, is just a beautiful work of art. Okay, so we're talking about the Middle Ages, uh, the ages of middle grades. A lot of these books can go either way, right? They can go much older, or they can go into those um, you know elementary school years. Getting a book that either is like this or something like this, this thing is 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 one of the most important things. And so this one is actually by the Met, and it's got beautiful pieces of art that are like Christmas art and then it's got a poem or a, you know Christmas original um, small Christmas story 
this is really goes a long way, right? And especially for a child who um, maybe doesn't want to read 50 pages to see that beautiful painting and then read a poem that goes with it. I found it's just um, something that clicks for a lot of, of my kids that, that just love this experience. I think it's fun to get some books that are just about snow. This is a book that um, my, some of my kids very much enjoyed. It talks about, you know, the characters of writing, but it also just is really about, just about snow, but, but a fun, fun book. Um, this book is called A Christmas Sweater. Um, this is a, this is a, a book where uh, really enf enforcing like um, family bonds being more important than things and experiences being more important than things. It's a fun book. Okay, so this book is called The Baker's Dozen. So it's the story partly of how that idea of Baker do a Baker's Dozen 13 cookies got started. Um, if your family is, you know, German or Dutch, you may celebrate St. Nicholas Day. Um, this is, a, you know, a story about this and the idea of the actual saint that came. So of course it's not, you know, being called Santa Claus, but it's another story about a person um, finding themselves things going wrong because they're being greedy. They then uh, turn around and things start turning around in their bakery as well. And so of course that's, that's going to tie into that idea that, you know, he starts to give people even more than, than he has to, you know, because he decides that that's what's going to be. Um, this might be my favorite um, nativity story. I love the pictures. Uh, and it's, the story is, you know, a, you know, about like a lot of stories. It's more in a little bit of depth, but it focuses on, uh, you know, the idea of how various people would see the star and come to see um, Jesus. I, I very much like this book. I, I just think it's a beautiful way to look at uh, Christmas. Bright Christmas is kind of interesting. It's told from an angel's perspective. So that's kind of a different way to look at Christmas. Um, this sort of is... Uh, set in maybe more medieval times. The pictures are just glorious and it has this very sort of a clear quality to it. Uh, very, um, hmm. it's just, you read it and you want to read it again. It's just visual and, uh, I don't know, something I really like. Just like I said, I thought it was very nice to have a book for your young, young children that was a com I've said this, you know, both of the youngest children and uh, for the older children, but In Search of Christmas is one of these great books where it's got a lot of things in it. It's got parts of the Bible in it. It's got hymns in it and what they meant. It's got beautiful artwork from um, about Christmas. And it it's, it's a great thing for your child to pick up and read a little bit here, a little bit there, but it has quite a bit of depth. Um, you know, maybe you don't want this particular one, you know, maybe there's one that more meets what uh, you want to teach your children um, about the nativity. But a book like this, I think is just worth its weight in gold and being something that kids can go back to again and again. This is a well-loved book, right, by Jan Brett, The Christmas Ranger. And this is a lovely book about a young man realizing that talking in an unkind way or treating people in an unkind way, of course, he, this is, he, he's behaving like this to his reindeer, doesn't get the results that he wants, right? It doesn't make people uh, behave the way that you think that they did. And so kindness is both the right thing to do, but, but the effective things to do. Uh, really a beautiful book. Um, the Other Wise Men is a lovely book where it's sort of hard to explain, and I, I'm kind of not giving you the full feel of it, but it's kind of the idea of a little bit like he, he because he's being like a good Samaritan, if you will, or other things come his way, he doesn't make it. 
to see Jesus um, in the way you might think. It's, it's a lovely book. Uh, Santa Comes to Little House um, is, you know, if you have, a, you're, you know this whole series, you'll, you'll love this little part of it. And of course, um, my kids were always struck by the idea that she's so excited to get, you know, mittens and a cup. And so if for nothing else, this is, this is a lovely book to think about how life has changed. I won't read the book for you, but it's a lovely book. You know, everybody knows Margaret Wise Brown from Good Night Moon, but not everybody knows The Little Fur Tree. This is another um, sort of classic Christmas story that I feel like maybe is sort of dying out. Um, whether you want this version or another version, I feel like it's just something that you kind of want to, to have in your, your wheelhouse of Christmas experiences. Um, the Christmas Rose is a book where, uh, I guess the closest thing you can think of is sort of like the little drummer boy. So this is a story where the person is having sort of a parallel experience to coming and um, giving baby Jesus um, a Christmas rose when she gets to um, feel like she has done something important. And she has done something important um, in the story. It's not, you know, like a biblical story. It's a person being put in the Book of Times and being able to see it. It's, it's nice that it's a, 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 young, a young lady having that experience. It seems you know, like there's a number of those things where it's a, a young boy. Christmas book that I very much enjoyed personally uh, is a book called The Christmas Cowboy. And you can uh, see it here. It's, it's a large book. It's a beautiful book. And it's kind of a, an, a sort of a different story. It's about a cowboy who is almost going to freeze to death, but he's found by a young man and his mother who has been recently widowed and uh, they nurse him back to health and eventually he uh, becomes the boy's father, which of course is the best Christmas gift of ever. Um, and so, uh, you know, just a just different kind of Christmas story that you might enjoy. Renee, what do you think? Thank you, Helen. You know how much I love this topic, reading and Christmas. Uh, what a great way to build the joy and the spirit of the season uh, by reading these great books, these classic books, the traditional books, the new books. There are so many great Christmas books out there. And I just can't emphasize enough to all of you who are watching out there. You want to start building a Christmas library if you don't have one. If your children are young and they're in kindergarten or they're toddlers and you're just a uh, uh, starting your library out, you can add a few books at a time each year and build up that library. It's going to become part of your Christmas tradition. It's going to be a, a wonderful way to decorate your house, to put out all of those Christmas books on display. And it's going to be something that your children cherish through the years as they take out each book and look it over each Christmas and read it and build those memories and get to know those stories over and over again each year and and we know those christmas stories are so poignant and magical and there's so much joy um some of my favorite christmas books the 12 days of christmas and this book is a pop-up book so you can see all of the pages that come up um and it's just beautiful it's beautifully done all of the pictures and uh, everyone knows the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas. It's wonderful for your children to read that book and to look at good quality art. Another one of our favorites is Twas the Night Before Christmas. It's a classic. I had it as a child. I think so many of us have uh, grown up with this book and had this book. And this particular version of it is a beautiful hardcover version. And the illustrations are just lovely, absolutely lovely. Your children are, are going to spend hours studying these illustrations um, every time they read this book. We also like, uh, just to add on a couple more favorites, Christmas in the Country, about a little girl that spends Christmas at her grandparents' house. Uh, this was a gift to my daughter from her grandmother and grandfather. And it's such a lovely book. My children love this book. It's beautiful. And think of those books that aren't necessarily traditionally Christmas books, uh, but have a Christmas theme and have that theme of 
love and giving and all of those um, sentiments that we think about at Christmas. Um, one that we really love is the Velveteen Rabbit. And this is about a little boy who receives, and, and we all, I think most of us know this story, but uh, received this, uh, this toy stuffed rabbit for Christmas. And, um, and it's such a beautiful story. Uh, it's really worth adding to your Christmas collection. This is a, a wonderful way to catch hold of that Christmas magic by building that library for your children, for your family, and it's a, a gift that you're giving yourself for years to come. Thanks, Helen. So one thing that you may want to do is to sort of pick a particular story. And as you can see, I've picked um, The Night Before Christmas. Some people pick The Nutcracker. I, I even know somebody who has uh, just many, many books about We Three Kings. But um, you, know, you can use one story and different, the different ways that people have chosen to illustrate it to really help your children again just sort of like the in the Chris, the toddler christmas video that i did on um you know doing the same thing with um nativity pieces you can use these as a way for your child to start to think about how a story can be you know first of all just art right the, the one story told different ways um you know in different styles is a great sort of introduction to art and how people um different ways that people are going to draw and tell a story um but also i think in this case um, with these books it can also sort of help your child think about how the story changes quite a bit um and depending on how it's illustrated so here's an uh so this is jan brett um gorgeous rich illustrations and i love her side pictures i just always I, I, I love all of her books for children i think but um this is a new a newer idea that it changes it quite a bit and so um you know it shows four different families it shows a family that lives in a mobile home it shows a family that lives in an apartment it shows a family that seems to be living to live in florida but it it also has you know santa himself is a little bit of a um, you know, a different look than you might be used to. And so you can see like this, these clear sort of crisp, more simple pictures, uh, you know, are just part of learning different kinds of art. This is actually a sort of anthology of things I talk about in a different place. But again, just showing how um, they're changing the art changes the pictures, changes, sorry, the story quite a bit. But having um, one particular book that you pick a number of um, versions of it, I think I might have eight versions of The Night Before Christmas, is a very nice way to introduce your child to different art styles and to this idea of um, how a story changes when we change the visuals with it. I hope you enjoyed this. We so enjoyed telling you about some of our favorite Christmas books and we we so want to emphasize how happy we are that we've done this, that we've made this a Christmas tradition in our homes. And we hope that you'll consider doing it too. It could be that you'll find yourself thinking like, well, I, I, you know, I can't find that exact book, but you know, I can find one like it. Also, you, you, I think you know that you can, there's a number of used book sites that you can look for these older books from, even if you don't find them on some of the main sites that you normally would look through. Uh, some of these books, um, are just so precious to me. So I hope that you'll enjoy them too. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, um, you know, God be with you, all these things. I hope your family has a wonderful season together. Um, thanks for watching this. If you liked it, we'd love it if you'd subscribe. Have a Merry Christmas again. Bye-bye.